Diamondback Mod Control and Resistance Management. What started off as a moderate insect season this fall has turned into one of the heaviest warm seasons on produce crops we've experienced in many years. Since mid-September Cabbage Looper, Beet Army Warm, and Diamondback Mod, populations have been consistently abundant in various areas throughout the Yuma County. For the most part, Cabbage Looper and Beet Army Warm have been relatively easy to manage with our standard insecticide products. In some cases, however, spray intervals have been shorter than normal due to overlapping egg lays and warm nighttime temperatures driving development of multiple overlapping generations in fields. Given the warm weather this fall and the abundance of alternate hosts for them to develop on all summer, the presence of these heavy infestations is not unusual. However, what is unusual is the emergence of diamondback moth as a fall pest of cold crops. It's been my experience that diamondback has become a fall pest within the past seven to eight years. Prior to then, I considered diamondback a spring pest, occurring in fields once the weather warmed up. Because diamondback attacks only cold crops, cruciferae, they do not survive in any great abundance during the summer due to the lack of host crops. However, it is not unusual for fall transplanted cold crops to arrive in fields with diamondback regardless of the origin of the transplants. This certainly would explain how diamondback populations can become so quickly established in September and October. Under ideal temperatures, 85 degrees, diamondback can complete a generation in a little over two weeks, as opposed to about three weeks necessary for cabbage blooper and beet armor warm. Thus, once established, diamondback populations can rapidly build up multiple generations in the field. Management of diamondback and coal crops often requires intensive insecticidal management, more so than what is generally required to control beet armor warming and cabbage looper. In some growing locations, like Florida and Hawaii, protection of coal crops often requires multiple spray applications, sometimes as often as twice per week to break the diamondback cycle. Unfortunately, intensive management can lead to insecticide resistance which Diamondback has long history of. I've become concerned this fall because I have had numerous reports from PCAs who have difficulty in controlling Diamondback in transplanted coal crops. Transplanted cabbage and cauliflower in particular. In some cases, there have been reports of our standard insecticide products not providing adequate efficacy against Diamondback. It's impossible to explain for sure why this Poor field performance has occurred as many operational and biological factors, application timing and frequency rate, choice of a product, weather and resistance, ultimately determine the level of efficacy. Although resistance isn't likely, we will be collecting and biasing a few of these populations just to make sure this is not one of these factors. For the short term though, PCA should remain diligent in their warm control using the standard products. Radiant, Proclaim, Corrigen, x and Trepid at label rate and by ground whenever possible. Also, it is important that PCAs practice sound insecticide resistant management by rotating modes of action following each application. This is particularly important with the diamide group of insecticides, IRAC group 28, because these products can be applied as both foliar spray and soil injections. and Multiple generations of left larvae can potentially be exposed to variably variable doses of this chemistry. The most effective way to delay onset resistant worms in leafy vegetables is to consider the recommendations provided in the guidelines recently updated entitled Insecticide Resistant Management Guidelines for Lepidopterous Larvae and Lettuce, which can be located at the Arizona Cooperative Extension website. Thank you.